Iran, uh, Foreign Minister Zarif would have video statement saying that, the, that Iran would not renegotiate or add on to the JCPOA. How does that influence the President's thinking? Do you have any response to that? Uh, we don't have any announcements at this time when the President has a final decision on what he will do uh, in terms of the JCPOA. We'll let you know. And uh, secondly, on the other topic in the news today, uh, could you explain why the President, when he spoke, uh, when he asked you answer questions to reporters uh, a few weeks ago about the $130,000 payment for Michael Cohen to uh, to, to Stormy Daniels, why the president was not truthful with the American people and with the people in this room. Uh, as uh, Mayor Giuliani stated, and I'll refer you back to his comments, this was information that the president didn't know at the time, but eventually learned. John, take a broader uh, view on this. Is no, you can't talk about the details. Um, but can I can I ask you, when the president so often says things that turn out not to be true? when the President and the White House show what appears to be a blatant disregard for the truth. How are the American people to trust or believe what is said here or what is said by the President? Uh, we give the very best information that we have at the time. Uh, I do that every single day and will continue to do that uh, every day I'm in this position. But the President, I mean, he, 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 when the story first happened, it said, came out that uh, Ty Cobb would be leaving and and the flood would be coming in. The president said fake news, said it was not true. Uh, he just, when he talked about the prisoners in North Korea, he said the previous administration had been, uh, you know, failed to get them out. These two of them were, were taken prisoner while Donald Trump was president. Uh, and obviously the totally conflicting statements on the Stormy Daniels payment. And these are statements that are just not true. Uh, when it comes to North Korea, there uh, I think you could also look at Otto Wambrier, who was uh, detained during a previous administration, as was one of the current detainees. Um, and so that would reflect the president's comments that he made. Uh, when it comes to the other, uh, the last instance that you mentioned, uh, as Mayor Giuliani stated, this wasn't something that was initially known, but later learned. Um, and again, we give the best information possible at the time, and we're going to continue to do that every single day. He started paying Sarah, back, uh, Michael Cohen back in February of last year. I mean, these, in the reimbursement was happening long before the president was asked about this. Is that a question or? But, but I'm saying, I mean, how could he not have known he was paying him back? Uh, paying again, him I'm back. not going to get into those details, and I would refer you back to the statements, uh, pretty lengthy statements made by uh, Giuliani both last night and this morning, as well as the president's tweets where they've both spoken about that. Jim? Just to follow up on that, uh, the president did talk about monthly retainers in his tweet, and then Rudy Giuliani said that the president only knew about this uh, 10 days to two weeks ago. How can you only be aware of something 10 days to two weeks ago, but at the same time being in the process of paying monthly retainers that apparently covered uh, this reimbursement to, uh, to Michael Cohen? Again, I can't get into the details of the ongoing litigation. I'd refer you back uh, to the president's yeah, outside counsel. follow up on it. You said on March 7th, uh, there was no knowledge of any payments from the president, and he's denied all of these allegations. Were you lying to us at the time, or were you in the dark? Uh, the president has denied and continues to deny the underlying claim. And again, I've given the best information I had at the time. And I would refer you back to the comments that you yourself just mentioned uh, a few minutes ago about the timeline but from that, Mayor Giuliani. That statement, oh, yes. but sir, that statement, Sorry, Jim, that statement was in, in reference to the reimbursement, the payment. Again, I gave you the best information that I had. Um, and that, that the, the allegations, know, the, time. the allegations, the president has denied and continues to deny the yes or but, no, Whether you were in the dark, I think it's a fairly simple question. Whether you, just I think it's a fairly simple answer that I, I've given time. you actually several times now. They gave you the best information that I had, and I'm going to continue to do my best to do that every single day, Jeff. Sarah, can you give us an update on the three Americans held in North Korea? Rudy Giuliani said that they were going to be released today. Is that true? Um, we can't confirm the validity of any of the reports currently out about their release, um, but we certainly would see this as a sign of goodwill if North Korea, North Korea were to release the three Americans ahead of uh, discussions between President Trump and uh, Kim Jong-un. In addition to being an attorney, Steve, sorry. Uh, sorry, Sarah, in addition to being an attorney for the president, 
does uh, Mr. Giuliani and Mayor Giuliani have a wider remit to talk about things like foreign policy? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Let's see. Yes, uh, Sarah, I wanted to ask you about uh, these reports citing U.S. intelligence that uh, the Chinese have installed new missile platforms on disputed islands in the South China Sea. And they also appear to now be basing fighter jets there. Meanwhile, pilots are being warned that uh, Chinese military personnel are pointing lasers at U.S. military aircraft in uh, Djibouti in Africa, injuring American pilots. Does any of this cross a red line for the president, and how does the administration intend to respond? Yeah, we're well aware of China's militarization of the South China Sea. We've raised concerns directly with the Chinese about this, uh, and there will be near-term and long-term consequences, and we'll certainly keep you up to date. Yeah. John? Thanks a lot, Sarah. Were, were you caught off guard by Mayor Giuliani's <laughs> comments on Fox News last night? Uh, I'm not part of the legal team and wouldn't be part of those discussions. So are you, is the administration, is the president, is he pleased with the job that Mayor Giuliani is doing right now? It seems as if he's opened the president up to some sort of criminal liability as it relates to federal election campaign violations. I haven't discussed that with the president. I wouldn't be part of those conversations. And so the president then is pleased with the job that Mr. Giuliani is doing? Uh, again, I haven't had that conversation with the president. Uh, that's an outside counsel and not something I would be a part of. Francesca. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. When was the last time that the president talked to Michael Cohen? And is Michael Cohen still his attorney? Uh, and also, is the White House concerned, or is the President concerned, that any conversations he would have had with Michael Cohen would have been picked up by the wiretap that we learned about today? Uh, let me see if I can get all of those questions since there were quite a few altogether. Uh, I'm not sure when the last conversation took place. On the second part, uh, I'm not aware of specific places where he's representing the president. And on the last one, I would refer you to the president's outside counsel about uh, any concerns of wiretapping. That wouldn't be something that we would To clarify, when did you specifically know that the president repaid Mr. Cohen for the $130,000, you personally? Um, the first awareness I had was during the interview last night. Major. Sir, you said earlier that when you've given answers around this general topic, you gave us the best information you had at the time. Now it appears that your position is you're not going to comment because it's ongoing litigation. Have you been advised not to wade into this to protect yourself from any potential legal exposure by giving either false information or information that proves later not to be able to be withstood in court? No, but I would always uh, advise against giving false information uh, as a person of human point, decency. For the, for I do my best. Jonathan's to give question earlier, when you say before that you gave the best information you had at the time, and I continue turned, to do that today. But it turns out not to be correct or accurate. Are you then trying to limit the liability that you may encounter by not dealing with any of those questions now and pushing it all off because you say it's? ongoing litigation. Uh, again, I'm giving the best information I have, some information I am aware of and some I'm not. When I can answer, I will. Um, but beyond that, I really don't have anything to add. Let me ask you something that the mayor said last night, not related to the questions you've gotten so far. He said he, being the president, fired Comey because Comey would not, among other things, say that he wasn't a target of the investigation. Is that the White House position now explaining why James Comey was fired? Uh, there are a number of reasons that James Comey was fired. Uh, the president's named several of them, but the bottom line is he doesn't have to justify his decision. The president has the authority to fire and hire, uh, and I think every single day we've seen that he made the right decision in firing James Comey. Again, I think that there are a number of reasons that he was fired. Uh, certainly James Comey was fired for lying, leaking, and politicizing the FBI. And the president has been, I think, repeatedly, day after day, been uh, proven to be exactly right in his decision to fire James Comey. Yeah. Sorry, Major, I'm going to keep going. You said that this is a completely Shannon, tainted gonna, investigation. Sorry. Do you agree Sarah, with that? Can you? You said it's a completely tainted sorry. investigation. Do you agree with that? Shannon, go ahead. Um, can you clear up this timeline a bit, back to Jim's question, about when exactly did the president learn that the payments were going to uh, Michael Cohen to cover the Stormy Daniels? I would refer you back to Mayor Giuliani's comment, and for anything further, I'd refer to you. two weeks. Um, and did the president know that 
Mr. Giuliani would specifically be talking about these payments on Hannity last night? Was he aware of the time and the method? I don't know. That's a question you'd have to ask somewhere. Do you know? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Um, a follow up to Jeff's question. Uh, Jay Sicklow and Rudy Giuliani have both commented uh, publicly on the North Korean hostages. Are they involved in any way in efforts to secure their release? Not that I'm aware of. Why are they commenting on this? That's a question you'd have to ask them. I don't speak for people on the outside. Christian. Sure. Is the president concerned that his own Justice Department authorized a wiretap that may have gathered uh, communications between him and his personal attorney, Michael Cohen? Uh, again, I'm not sure of the, the comments on that report or um, the claims in that report. That's something that you would have to uh, talk with the Department of Justice and the president's, the president's outside counsel. when he learned the reporting that Michael Cohen's phones were wired I, I several days before. I haven't talked to him about that, and again, I'm not, I can't verify the validity of that report. Just going back to the payments question, how many payments did the president make to Michael Cohen after the election? You'd have to ask the president's outside counsel. Sarah. But Sarah, you're standing here. Sorry, Kristen. Can I just ask you about Rudy Giuliani's comments? Rudy Giuliani said this morning, Imagine if that came out on October 15, 2016, in the middle of the last debate with Hillary Clinton, a reference to the payment. So does the White House now acknowledge that that payment was made with politics in mind? Uh, again, I'm not aware of the back and forth, and I would refer you to the president's outside counsel. Sarah, yesterday the president threatened to get involved in the, in the Justice Department if memos were not turned over in a timely manner to the House, uh, the House Intelligence Committee. What actions is the, is the president considering taking, and what does a timely manner mean to the president? How soon does he want the unredacted version of the special Probably memo? yesterday. Uh, but what in terms of what he might do, um, as the president likes to say, we'll see what happens. Olivia. Thank you, Sarah. Um, on the Haspel nomination, would you uh, remind us what the president's position is regarding the potential use of interrogation tactics that meet international definitions of torture? Uh, I'm not sure what those two things are. you're trying to connect. Uh, I know that Acting Director Haspel has done everything appropriate under the law, uh, and she's going to be a great CIA director, and we look forward to her being confirmed. Okay. John? Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, question on Russia. Uh, this morning, the Financial Times reported that Alexei Kudrin, a former close associate of President Putin, and a strong advocate of warmer relations with the United States may well be rejoining his government. This raises another question. You've said that the President would have a summit with Mr. Putin sometime in the near future. Can you give us any clues when that'll be? Uh, if it's anything been determined on a possible Trump-Putin summit? Uh, nothing has been finalized on that front. I think the the next big uh, summit, if you will, word, I'll, I'll borrow your word, that the president will engage in will likely be between President Trump and Kim Jong-un. Uh, beyond that, I don't have any so updates. There will be no meetings. It's likely that there's no meetings with President Putin before the Kim-Trump summit. Uh, not that I'm aware of. Certainly nothing is finalized at this point, but uh, certainly the president would still be very much open to sitting down with uh, leader of Russia. Emerald. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Following up on Sagar's question, in regards to those memos and the congressional oversight, um, Rosenstein is saying this is, excuse me, this is extortion. What is the White House's response to him calling it extortion? And does the president support the Freedom Caucus's articles of impeachment for Rosenstein? Uh, the president would like to see the request of Congress uh, to DOJ met. Uh, I haven't had a conversation with them about the articles of impeachment. What if you just said that James Comey was fired for lying and losing and What if he lied about before he was fired, and what did he leak before he was fired? Uh, the uh, there are a number of allegations. One uh, in which he lied during congressional testimony and um, has been uh, continually, I think, had a number of contradictions since then, which I pointed out that the president said um, he has learned every day since firing Comey that it was the right thing to do and certainly has been justified in doing so. But again, going back to uh, the president, frankly, doesn't have to have a justification. He can hire and fire uh, whoever he wants, and he made the decision to fire James Comey, and that's 
certainly a decision he stands by and one that he feels very justified in since. Is Julie? Giuliani correct in saying that he was fired in part because he wouldn't tell the president that he wasn't part of the investigation? I, I, I'm, I can't speak for Mayor Giuliani. I haven't talked to the president about that. Julie? Did the president file a fraudulent personal financial disclosure last year when he filed a report that did not include a loan from Michael Cohen or any company affiliated with him? I mean, if there was no loan, then what would he have been reimbursing? Uh, I, I I don't know. You would have to talk to the president's outside counsel. Thank Brian, you. Thank you. can you say why he was talking with Giuliani about the North Korean prisoners, given that he doesn't have a high-level clearance? Uh, I'm not aware that they spoke about that, so I don't know. Was he aware that, that Giuliani was going to be talking about them on TV during the negotiations? Uh, again, I'm not aware that they spoke about it, so I can't answer that. So, Brian? A couple of quick questions. Does the president believe he's above the law, and does no. he prefer to sit down with Kim Jong-un? Before I'll answer the first. I'll answer the first question. No, go ahead. Thank you. And then, does he prefer to sit down with Kim Jong Un versus uh, Bob Mueller? Uh, I certainly think that the president feels like stopping a nuclear war and helping protect the safety and security of people across the globe would certainly be uh, the number one priority of the president of the United States. And certainly I would think uh, would be the priority that most Americans would share and support the president doing. Sarah. Take one last question. Sarah. Lalit? Sarah. Sorry, April. Okay, Sarah, really fast. Um, can you, uh, two questions. Can you, if you're not ready, if you're not ready. Sarah, I was looking for her. I thought I were here. She's usually standing over there. Well, okay, me off. I'll come to you next. Sarah, okay, okay. So, Sarah, at this point, can you tell us definitively if the president plans to answer any questions from Bob Mueller? And if not, what is now in place here at the White House to go through that process of a subpoena? possible indictment, a possible grand jury. What is uh, again, those are all questions you would need to refer to the outside counsel. Okay, well, now, going to Rudy Giuliani. Did Rudy, Gi did Rudy Giuliani do harm to the president today and last night in his conversations to Fox? Uh, I don't believe so. Are you, why Sorry, didn't he, I'm going to take the last talk, question why like I promised to, it. Why didn't he talk right. to the White House press office about his impacting stellar statements about what was happening? Uh, the, the White House press office. office wouldn't coordinate with the president's outside legal team on legal well, strategy. Blindside. You said yourself well, you were blindsided. I actually didn't use that term. Well, but. I said it, but you were blindsided <laughs> from what you said. Well, for uh, with all due respect, you actually don't know much about me in terms of what I feel and what I don't. I want to understand how this operates. All right, I think we're good. Go ahead. Last week there was a meeting between the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the Chinese President Xi Jinping in China. How does the White House see the meeting between the two leaders, India and China, coming in, trying to improve the relationship? And did President had a role in that? Uh, we don't have an uh, official policy, but certainly think it's always uh, good when other world leaders are getting along, and certainly when we can cooperate, that's definitely a good thing. Uh, we have great relationship with both countries and hope to continue to do so. Thanks, guys.